I'm Mr. Mega Man fan. This is Genesis Does. And by special request today, we are taking a look at Iron Helix for Sega CD, which came out in 1993, not just for Sega CD, but for Windows, PC, and Macintosh. And in fact, this version is a port of the PC game to the Sega CD. And whether or not that made it better or worse, I'll let you be the judge when you see the footage of the game. Now this Sega CD case was not in the greatest of shape when I bought it, but I did manage to adhere the cracks together so they didn't spider any further and completely destroy the case. And on a positive note, it did have the foam insert inside, as well as the CD and the instructions. They're showing the Jeremiah O'Brien logo for the ship that is the key aspect of the Iron Helix game. You'll notice this Sega CD doesn't have data all the way to the edge, which to me is already a sign that maybe they didn't make the most of this port, but again, that will show when we get to the actual gameplay. I know Ryan always likes it when I look at the manual, and since I have one, there's no excuse not to. So we see here that the basic controls involve using up, down, left, right to negotiate around with your probe. We'll explain what the probe is when you see the gameplay. And of course, you're also able to toggle an arm on the probe to interact with the environment and use other things like maps and a quote, jammer, unquote. You collect DNA, locate video clues, eliminate the defender and destroy the ship. What does all of that mean? Well, let's show you the gameplay. So in the science fiction future that is Iron Helix, humanity has come into conflict with an alien race known as the Thanosians. It's currently a cold war, but it's about to get a lot hotter because a deadly accident has taken place aboard the Jeremiah O'Brien. The crew is in shambles. The defender of the ship has run amok and things are going from bad to worse because a peaceful Thanosian planet known as Calliope has been targeted by the Iron Helix, which is a planet-killing weapon aboard your ship. Imagine this game's equivalent of the Death Star from the original Star Wars trilogy, and you see why this is a huge problem. You've got to stop the Iron Helix from destroying Calliope before it's too late. And if you can't do that, it's game over. For more on that, we'll let the captain explain the situation. To anyone receiving this message, this is Captain William Parrish of the Jeremiah O'Brien. We have lost control of our ship and are currently headed towards one of our programmed targets, the Thanosian planet known as Calliope. There is some kind of virus on board that has changed our DNA patterns and has infected us with a disease that seems to rapidly be attacking our immune systems. Our Defender security robot will soon deploy and kill us as if we were intruders. We are helpless to stop it. Kind of ironic that a Sega CD game from 1993 predicted the very situation we're living with in 2020. I suppose that's just the way it goes with science fiction. It has the uncanny ability to predict future events whether we want it to or not. And now, for some more Iron Helix plot exposition. This is Admiral Arbok. Your mission now is to send your probe on board, find the DNA from the crew, then find the video clues. After that, you must get rid of the Defender and use one of the clues to stop the ship. Good luck. Good luck, she says, and she's not kidding because in this game you seriously do need a healthy dose of luck. You've got three probes and each one is incredibly fragile when it comes to the defender that is on board the Jeremiah O'Brien. If it finds you, you're dead. You can't do anything about it, or at least I haven't been able to do anything about it. I've tried using my arm to defend myself. I've tried confronting it before it attacks me. I 
suppose it might be possible to jam it, but I haven't been able to do that in any of my playthroughs. Or that may be a limitation of the fact that I'm using an emulator to record footage of the game right now, and perhaps it would work better on my actual JVC XI. But that is belaboring the point of whether or not this is any fun to play, and even if I could stop the Defender from destroying my probe, I would have to say, not so much. Now, the best example I can give you is Five Nights at Freddy's, where you have a station that you monitor, and you can open and close doors, and you can open and close vents, and you have a limited amount of battery life. And with that game, you're not so much playing as you are trying to advance the plot by doing things in the right amount of time to avoid bad things happening to you. It's one of these limitations of Sega CD games in a lot of cases where it's a bunch of interactive cutscenes linked together by some really obtuse stuff that isn't a lot of fun to do. There is a distinctive load time each time you want to move your probe. It's as though you're playing something like Bioshock, but you have to wait several seconds before it animates each frame as you walk from one area to the next. Now, would Bioshock be any fun to play that way? I would say no. And would Bioshock be any fun to play without any weapons to defend yourself with? Again, I would say no. It's novel that they were trying for a first-person perspective, making you feel like you're actually in the probe, looking out through its camera, and you get the sense that you're in control of what you're doing, and yet you're not in control of what you're doing because the ways that you can move the probe are strictly controlled by the limitations of the Sega CD, its ability to render video frames and display video clips and interact with your controller. So you can only do so much and this is all you can do. You can move the probe, you can look for clues, and once you find the clues, if you can even find them, which I have a lot of trouble doing, you can then use the clues to advance through gated off areas. You need the DNA to move from one section to the next. Here's a perfect example of what I mean. This is my second playthrough with the probe. I'm trying to access the private quarters of Captain Parrish, but without his DNA, I can't get in. Even though I'm a probe and I've got a mechanical arm, and presumably I could just hack the control pad by interfacing with it, or maybe just rip the door open with that arm, it specifically requires the DNA. It doesn't let you get through the door in any other way. So if you haven't found his DNA and used it, you can't get in. And then, of course, the Defender finds you and destroys your probe, and you're right back at square one again. It is extremely tedious and frustrating. If you need a walkthrough to play a game... Is that game any fun to play? I don't think I could beat Iron Helix without a full walkthrough from Game Facts that tells me exactly where to go to find each clue. There's not even any visual indication of where clues are. I'm dumbstruck by the fact that with my third and final probe, I found a clue by entering a dumpster. What logical sense does that make? What indication did I have that going into a dumpster and reaching around with my mechanical arm would suddenly yield a piece of DNA? How did it end up there? Why did it end up there? Was there a trail of blood leading to the dumpster? No. Was there an indication that a violent fight had taken place outside of the dumpster? No. There's nothing to tell you what to do. And I've gotta think that the Windows PC and Macintosh versions did a better job of explaining this. And also, I've got to assume that the graphical resolution 
was much higher on PC because they are really trying to cram this into Sega CD and make it work. And they've already shrunk the video clips down to incredibly small sizes and inserted scan lines in between them with a green filter to make you think that that's just the technology of the video conferencing that you're doing. When in reality, they were saving memory by not having to animate every single line of the video. So they tried like hell to squeeze all of this into the game and make it a one disc game. And the disc isn't even all the way full to the rim. It looks like there are easily a couple hundred megabytes that could have been used that went to waste. That section of the disc is blank. At the very least, they could have put some audio clues in that extra space. When you're coming up on something that you need that would progress the game, there could be some sort of alert sound or some voice from your commanding officer that tells you, hey, you're in the right area, search here. I mean, if you can communicate across the vastness of space with this probe, why can't the people in charge of you and this mission communicate with you to tell you what to do with the probe? Give you something. Or maybe your probe could look around a room and when it sees something useful, it gives you a tactical alert on the screen saying, hey, use the arm, there's something here. It doesn't do that. This game stymies you in every way. It, it just blocks you from having fun. And I don't understand why this would be compelling to someone with a Sega CD when there are so many more interesting ways to use this technology and make it accessible and fun and playable. I get that it was a novel concept at the time and they hadn't quite figured out how to make the most of what they had available with the Sega CD. And I don't want to totally dismiss Sega CD as being a bad way to play games. There are a lot of fun games on Sega CD. Unfortunately, a lot of the fun ones are also way more expensive than Iron Helix. At $15, this was an affordable price point of entry. And yet, even at that, I would say I'm glad I have it. And I'm also not glad I have it because I'm just not thoroughly enjoying this experience. And there's no way to sugarcoat that. You can't polish a turd, as the old saying goes. Iron Helix is very dull. It doesn't excite you to interact with this environment. It doesn't entice you to solve the mystery. It doesn't reward you in any discernible way for doing anything that's in your objectives. You just move, look, move, look, move, look. It's Castle Wolfenstein without the guns and the fun. It's bad, bad, bad Sega CD gameplay. I can't recommend this one, but I can tell you that there's a little more plot exposition when you fail this mission. That's really all you have to look forward to in this game is the times you get to watch the video clips with these actors in front of green screens trying so badly to command some gravitas for this plot and make it feel important knowing that it's going to be rendered down into tiny pixelated form that's going to rob any facial expressions they make and audio that's probably not going to convey the richness of the delivery that they are providing if you want to even be generous enough to call it that so they are giving a marginal effort knowing what they're getting into and the game is giving a marginal effort delivering that to you and the end result is barely playable and if Iron Helix is your favorite Sega CD game, I'm so sorry. I would just tell you, I can't make it any better for myself, but you can make it better for yourself by finding something that's more interactive, more enjoyable, 
more worth your time. So, with that said, let's watch what happens when you fail for the final time and your last probe has been destroyed by the ship's defender. I turn it over now to our faithful commander who has a few words to say about your ineptitude at progressing the plot of the game, but why would you want to? Because the game itself is inept and it just begs to be ended. I am not sad at Calliope's fate. I am only sad at mine that I wasted my time playing Iron Helix. Here we go. This is Admiral Arbok. So you were unsuccessful. Do you realize that your inability to stop the O'Brien will result in a horrible war with millions of dead? Think about that on your way to Starbase Amethyst, where you will be debriefed. 